So uh, let's begin. Welcome to today's news briefing presented by Cal OES and Listos, California, and co-hosted by Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media. I'm Sandy Close, EMS Director. As many of you know, EMS and California Black Media have served as a hub of sorts for several of these vital briefings, and we've been very honored to do so. We've partnered with our friends at Cal OES to convey how California is taking action to prepare its communities and ensure all residents have the resources they need to stay safe in the face of a range of emergency situations, from extreme heat to severe winter weather to wildfires and more. While today's briefing will reinforce many of the tips previously suggested and remind participants of the comprehensive resources available to them, this briefing will also focus on a unique new initiative of Listos California, Listas, a campaign to enlist women, the backbone of our state's emergency preparedness. Listas was launched last month during Women's History Month. This first of its kind campaign came to fruition following the identification of key demographics that would benefit from additional resources to help them prepare for disaster. The goal of this new campaign is to empower women with emergency resilience knowledge during spring 2024. Importantly, LISTAS represents California's ongoing commitment to ensuring that the most vulnerable populations are fully informed about and aware of both the challenges that may come their way and also the extensive range of resources available to them to confront these challenges ahead of time. When disaster strikes, and after such events as well. Today, you will hear from state experts who will provide information you can convey to women in your audiences to get ahead of and be prepared for emergency situations. We ask our speakers to speak slowly as I'm doing, so our interpreters in Spanish Mandarin and Korean can keep up with you and not miss part of what you're saying. We ask our reporters to enter questions in the chat box, which we will take up after each speaker as time allows. And if you will, we ask speakers to respond, monitor the questions, and respond to those that you feel inclined to address. We will send a video of today's briefing with additional information on our three key participants in a separate email to all our participants later this afternoon. Now I turn the conference over to our moderator, Regina Brown Wilson, Executive Director of California Black Media, who will introduce our speakers. Regina, you're off and running. Well, thank you so much, Sandy. Um, and welcome everyone. Um, on today's call, uh, as Sandy said, you're gonna hear from experts working on the front lines. Um, our first speaker is Deanna Kravs Pelio, Assistant Director of Crisis Communications, Public Affairs at the California Governor's Office of Emergency Service. Deanna will provide a brief overview of LISTAS. We'll also hear from Assembly Member Stephanie Nguyen, who represents California's 10th Assembly District and has previously served on the Elk 
Grove City Council. Assembly member Nguyen uh, will highlight the important role that women play as leaders in ethnic communities. And next, you will hear from what I believe is going to brighten up everybody's day is happy. Um, happy Wormsley, a mother of two and a teacher. Uh, happy will talk about um, her list listas, how listas has empowered um, her both personally and professionally. And uh, be able to make it so that you'll be able to ask questions of each of them. So Deanna, I would like to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Regina. And thank you so much, Sandy, and all of you who um, I feel like we're, we're old friends already and kind of talking to you guys during uh, all of the crazy times that California has been through all of the natural disasters and emergencies. But what I will tell you right now is this is really great news and it's positive and it's um, uplifting and it is our at least us campaign. So essentially our goal uh, at the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services is to help people during times of need, uh, whether that's through natural disasters or other kinds of emergencies. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to see, you know, what kind of messages uh, really resonated with Californians during these times of need and what could we do as a state to help prepare those people. So we did some research. We wanted to go in there, talk to different communities, talk to different types of people. And this effort is a direct result of that important research where we want to provide authentic, all women content to empower women with uh, specific knowledge in spring. And so let's uh, talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, we have a few goals with Least Us. So number one, we want to give them that knowledge. Just we wanna be clear and concise and relatable. What do you do during an emergency? There was an earthquake in Taiwan recently. That can happen here. What are the uh, simple, steps that you can take to be safe and also help your family. But then also we want to give them um, Californians, California moms, California women, just basic disaster tips for any kind of emergency. So whether um, you know the tips are uh, for every kind of emergency or any kind of emergency, we wanna be able to give those resources back out into the community. Let's go with the next slide. So, so talking a little bit about research, we talked um, to many different, you know, Californians and especially California women. And we identified two very specific audiences with our research. And the first one is really that head of the household. So, um, you know, women who bear the weight of responsibility, maybe they're trying to make ends meet. They have, you know, children to take care of. They're also taking care maybe of elderly parents. English may not be their native language. Um, and we saw specifically that women um, over the age of 18, mostly in Latino, uh, Asian Pacific Islander and black communities are the ones that would listen to our message, the ones that need the information and the ones that would probably actually use it during an emergency. Let's go to that next slide. And the second audience is the messenger. So uh, ultimately, maybe it's kind of like a first or second or third generation um, Latina, Asian American Pacific Islander, or Black woman who is specifically helping support maybe their family unit within and navigating um, the life that we are living in, not only in the United States, but California as well. And so maybe they're a little more sophisticated, um, and they know, but they know where they grew up from, right? And so um, we wanted to specifically target these two audiences with emergency information. Let's go to the next slide. And again, we had two primary goals is not only to provide Californians with a comprehensive set of resources, with videos and very actionable tips to help keep Californians safe, but then number two is actually impulse them 
to sign up for local emergency alerts within their area and actually receive life-saving information from their local governments if and when an emergency actually were to occur. Let's go to the next slide. So here is our uh, listoscalifornia.org slash um, alerts page where we want people to go to that website. We want them to put in what county they are from and they will receive during an emergency, either a phone call, text message, sometimes email, hey, there's a wildfire happening in your backyard, you need to evacuate now. Or what they might receive is an alert that says, flooding is imminent, there is rain on the way, um, you know, do not drive through flooded areas. So those actionable tips will come directly from trusted messengers, local government sources, and they will be able to actually help people in real time during an emergency. Let's go to the next slide. I do want to say that uh, this, this campaign um, is not only beautiful, you can see it, you can see all the lovely women. We've not only had, you know, real everyday uh, California women as part of our campaign through videos, through social media graphics, but we've had some really um, important California leaders too. What I will say personally is that um, this is this is special for me. I am first generation Latina. Um, I always think of my mom. It's always been my mom, my grandma, and I, the three of us, always. Um, and we are, you know, just trying to help navigate each other navigate through life in the U.S. and life in California overall. Um, pardon uh, any um, bad words, but I always say that, you know, the women, the women in my family were chingonas. And so we want to do everything we can to not only help our people because we're bad, we're baddies, um, to be able to actually um, help people during times of need. And this campaign, I really think, embodies that. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, and so we have had such a successful effort, not only in March, we're going to still go through April. And so we have um, specifically worked with community-based um, trusted messengers to make meaningful phone calls to California women. We've already made over 400,000 of those calls, asking them to sign up for local emergency alerts and letting them know about preparedness information. We've created 70 unique digital video pieces and we're asking for people to do more. We're asking them to, to, to do their own videos and to be a part of this movement. It doesn't just have to last in March and April. I think we can push this through the rest of the year because uh, this is really important for our communities. And then we've also done some really cool videos with key emergency managers and leaders across the state. And then we have all of that in a nice package um, on our website as well. Let's go to the next slide. So I'm, I feel like I'm talking so much. Really, the, the, the stars of the show here are going to be our VIPs, Assemblymember Nguyen and, and Happy, our, our, our local mom and teacher. But I will tell you, um, if you give me just a few more minutes of your time, about a special um, initiative that we had with the first partner. And maybe let's play her video if we can, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Hi, Jen Siebel Newsom here, first partner of California. As moms, we shoulder so much of the invisible yet vital work of caring for our family's needs in both times of calm and times of chaos. And so in recognition of Women's History Month, we are working around the clock to empower women with emergency resiliency knowledge so that we can help ourselves and our families during trying times like natural disasters. For the governor and I, it was actually really important to teach our kids in the early ages where to meet or who to contact in case of an emergency. So please talk with your family and friends about emergency preparedness and take the necessary steps to create a plan. Think about the essentials you're gonna need for an emergency from portable chargers to medicine, to water, snacks, to first aid supplies. And sign up for alerts to ensure that you get all of the essential information during an emergency. 
save this video for later and share it with the women and loved ones in your life so that you are ready in case of extreme weather events. We are listas. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're so honored to have her participation, but she is one of so many people that have really been uh, a part of this awesome campaign. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Happy, who is going to talk more about her her and her family's participation, actually. Um, actually, maybe I'll hand it first to Regina, and then I'll hand it over to Happy. And you can actually hear from, from the real people that were doing this awesome work. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Deanna. And I'm and I'm looking at that and I'm going to, there were a couple of questions that came to me directly. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and and then I'll um and I'll shift it over to Happy. Um, but there was a question that came. Um, what women's groups are uh, are you enlisting to get the word out? That's a great question. So uh, I think the benefit is that we're doing this through Cal OES and Listos California. And so not only do we have at our, at our fingertips um, grantees that we actually back and fund and, and, and really um, inspire us to do the work within communities. Um, we have over 73 of them. You guys can, can check them all out online. They're helping push this the word out too, but then also we have a larger partnership network where we're um, getting the word out that way as well. And so, you know, it takes a village. Um, we're kind of doing this, um, you know, like a quick and dirty um, style campaign. You know, there's there's nothing, um, there's no uh, paid media or, you know, any of that, but we want this to really be a community and organic effort, you know, within California women and families and communities as well. Thanks, Regina. Great. And the the other question was, um, what is unique about how women approach emergencies versus how men approach them? Uh, so a few different things. Uh, and, you know, maybe the assembly member or happy could, could help me in a little bit, but uh, with this, but I think personally for me, you know, my, my mom was born in, in Mexico. Um, my grandma never learned English and my mom Kind of learn English just being here and she was always seen as as the leader within our family not only that tight nucleus but also for our family back in Mexico and so I think for us is is that yes I think you know it, there's it's obvious that there are you know these um you know prototypes of, of families and the different types of family values within within the United States and within California but I think at the end of the day, um, research told us that women are the ones that push their families to do things. Um, it's not it's not necessarily the the man of the of the household anymore. I always tell people that I didn't think we need research to tell us that, but it just helps that we have some of that backed with data. And so I think at the end of the day, they're the ones that are you know most likely to be looking after elderly parents or they're the ones that are going to be engaged within their community or their schools or their neighborhood or local associations and so um, i think what we want is for women to have that knowledge have that information not only talk about it with their partners or significant others with their family with their friends but also with their children as well um, i think some of these situations are really scary uh, emergencies are not fun. And, and I think that, um, you know, it's all very daunting. And so the more that a family can have preparation and, and have resources and go bags and, and talk about it, I think you demystify a lot of um, what it is to be responding to an emergency as well. So um, I can't think of anyone better than my own mom to have helped me um, throughout my life, um, especially. Well, thank you so much, Deanna, for that. Um, I, you know what? I think I had a switch up. So I think it's actually time for us to have uh, Assembly Member Nguyen. Um, I think you are up next. Yes, thank you. And I know Happy has uh, class and, and whatnot. I, I do want to- We can switch, sure. whichever hey. one makes sense. Okay? I didn't want to mess anybody up on time. Yeah, I'm okay because I know she's got some kiddos in her classroom here. So I, I you know, that's really important. The education okay. and the teachers are our heroes. And so I want to make sure she's okay on time. Does she want to go next? I'm I'm okay giving up my time for her if she needs it. 
It, the, either or, I've allotted, my school has helped me a lot for this because they understand the importance, importance of emergency preparedness as well. So I can, I can wait. Okay, perfect. Well, um, thank you so much for having me. I can't tell you how excited I am to be a part of this, um, Sandy and, and Regina. You know, a lot of the questions that were asked with Diana and what she covered was around women. And I too can say this, that when there is a family gathering that needs to happen, when there is a holiday, who do we call? We call the moms, we call the grandmas. What do we do? How do we do this? Where are we going? So naturally we are the ones that plan everything. Our kids, when they're sick, who do they want? They want their moms, right? When we're giving birth, who are the ones that are falling over because they can't take it and see it? It's the men in the room, right? And so we, as women naturally are already leaders. Diana talked a lot about cultural differences and I can say as a daughter of uh, refugees, Vietnamese refugees, um, it is a challenge. It's a challenge for us as women in ethnic communities because at some point, not only do we try to keep our culture and we try to um, nurture that, but we also have to step out of the box and also say, you know what, we can lead as well too. And what I love so much about Listas California is that it does include women of all sorts of different colors and all sorts of different culture. So think of California as diverse as we are, we're like a crayon box. And in the crayon box, there's all different colors. And think of the crayon box being used. They come eventually in different sizes and different shapes. And that's what we are here in California. And as women, I would say this, culturally, Diana talked about this, that there are in some cultures where, you know, they wanted sons, they wanted men or whatnot, but things have changed and things have evolved. And it is the women, the daughters that are taking care of the parents, taking care of the grandparents you know, going through the directions, taking a look at things, what to do, who's clipping the coupons and doing the grocery shopping and cooking dinner, and making sure all of that is done. We go to work, we come home, we take care of the kids, we take care of the house and we come home with a happy face, right? And we prepare, we know it's gonna rain tomorrow. We let our kids know it's gonna rain, put those rain boots on, make sure they have their lunches. That's where we've evolved. And for emergency situations that we're in, I think it's great that we have women being the one to deliver that message. Because as a woman of color, if I were to see a video and it was going to prepare me for what's to come, and I saw women that looked like me, that understand me, I would be more willing to listen to it because I would say she gets it, she understands, she knows. Going back to the fact that we all come from different cultures, different households, not all one household is the same. But when you bring women of different cultures, different colors, ethnic communities, it makes it so that way disasters affect everybody, all cultures. It doesn't just hit one community or one color, right? It hits us all. And seeing different women being able to talk about this, talk about how we also at home, prepare, get our go bags ready, have the batteries ready, have batteries charged, have water ready, both for washing and for drinking as well. I mean, those are things that other communities can see that, you know what, if she's doing this, if Regina's doing this, if Happy's doing this, if Diana's doing this, if Stephanie's doing this, I should be doing this in my home as well too. So, so important, more crucial than anything that we ensure that women from ethnic communities are a part of this. I can't tell you how many folks that I've seen watched the video, saw it online somewhere and said, oh my God, you know what, El Nino is coming. And that's all they remembered. And they said, we gotta make sure everything is ready. And guess what? After I watched your video, I made sure I had everything together just to be prepared. And so we didn't need the data. We didn't need the research as Diana said, um, it works, it's there. But just to make sure people know, we have evidence that it works that women of color, women from ethnic communities know how to not just say it, but to deliver the message in an effective way so that other communities can listen and follow as well too. 
I'll stop there unless there were questions that came across. Well, I'm sure that there are, and I'm sure I'm going to get them as they're queuing up, but I know that I think you have a video that we're supposed to queue up. Hey, everybody. Here are five important tips to stay safe. Tip number five, think about people who need extra help. It could be your neighbor, someone with pets, or someone who needs help getting around. Tip number four, get your home ready in case you need to hunker down. That means getting water for drinking and washing and food that will not spoil. Tip number three, think about the essentials. Batteries, flashlight, first aid kit, and any important medicine. Keep those all in one place in case you need to leave quickly. Tip number two, make sure you have a plan to connect with your loved one. That means having a number to call or even finding a location or a place to all meet. Finally, the most important tip, tip number one, sign up for alerts. The link's in the bio. It's fast, easy, and it could save a life. Remember, disasters don't wait. Well, thank you so much for that. Disasters don't wait. So I think I do have a, a, a question that's queued up for you. Um, some cultures are patriarchal. Has Listas encountered any pushback? So I don't know if that's probably for you, Deanna, if you have seen it or if you, I mean, as an assembly member, if you have seen it. I've not seen it, but I, I completely understand. Um, coming from, as I mentioned earlier, a very traditional family background, um, you know, they see it as the men are the one that runs everything and we should listen to men. But, you know, we talked about this and, and things have changed. And I think the more we put women in front of everybody, the more we do things like this and we put it in front of them and, and we see how successful it is and how it works. I think that's the way to do it. I've not seen any pushback. I'm not sure if Diana can um, speak to that. I feel like the assembly member took the words out of my mouth. Um, no pushback. I think at the end of the day, like, um, you know, we we do need to to do anything that we can to help our families and communities. And this is just one way to do that. And there's no no right or wrong way. But as long as people have the information they need to, to be prepared, you know, that that's really what matters. Right. And then what kind of resources can women ask for help? Uh, for help, uh, ask for to help them um, and other women be resilient. Did that make sense? I'm sorry if I butchered the way that came out. Yeah, I'll um I'll try to I'll try to answer that a little bit. And um, I think at the end of the day, um, this is just one of many things, right? I think that the 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 administration, the state legislature, has really invested um, so much time and effort and. And, and resources into, you know, just uh, communities and families overall through a myriad of ways. Um, but what I will say is that uh, this campaign is specific to emergency preparedness, emergency knowledge. Go to our Listos California uh, webpage and you can see all the resources there, social media, um, spread the word. Um, and, and really, you know, I would also encourage you to talk with community leaders to see um, you know, what kind of they're seeing or hearing on the ground as far as emergency preparedness, because we know it's not if, but when the next disaster emergency happens as well. And so, you know, uh, Cal OES, Lisa's California is just one little part of a larger machine of the state um, to ensure that uh, folks have all the resources they need. I will um, probably um, just give a little nod to the legislature and you know their staff who work out of the districts the work every day to connect real california families and communities with state resources and local ones too um, whether that's through uh, edd or the dmv or any other kind of of those of those larger issues um, i know that i've relied on the legislature in that regard to help uh, my family and um, and i'm sure that they do it for countless other families as well. Great. And I think last question, and Deanna, this may be you, but this also may be for you, uh, Assembly Member. What's the most important evidence your research has found? Um, gosh, uh, so many things. I think um, at the end of the day, the most important thing that we saw is that um, people need to see an emergency to truly believe it. And I think that that's really scary. Um, and I think we did get anecdotes from from people that 
you know, ultimately uh, said, well, I might not evacuate my home um, until I, I see the water rising, you know, um, on my street corner, or I might not evacuate my home unless I see the flames, you know, down the street from a wildfire. And so I think there are still so many communities out there that maybe have never experienced an emergency or a natural disaster. And so it's really being able to show people that this is real. Um, this happens every day. It's not just to, not to California. It's in across the states in different ways and in other countries as well. And so I think being able to make some of that real, but then also being able to give people with that preparedness information and knowledge is really one of the most important parts of the work that we do so that people can understand, um, you know, and, and really truly prepare themselves um, during times of need. Great. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, now we're going to direct um, the floor over to Happy and Happy second grade or elementary school teacher. Going to make us all happy. <laughs> Go ahead, Abby. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shayla Happy. I'm in Warmsley. I go by Happy, um, especially being an elementary school teacher. I use my middle name, which is Happy, as a way to disarm many of my students as well as uh, faculty and their families. And so far, it has usually worked. Um, I'm excited to be here, um, especially as a mother and a teacher to little people because um, safety and being prepared for the what ifs is part of what it means to be a teacher. You're preparing students for the future, the what ifs, the what am I going to be? How am I going to get there? What tools can I use to achieve those goals? And so for me, thinking about emergency preparedness, it literally goes in a lot of hands, hand in hand. Thinking about safety and well-being of my family and students is always a top priority for myself. And this campaign through Lisa's California has empowered me even further by providing viable resources and information to be better prepared for a lot of those emergencies and disasters. Knowing that I have the knowledge and the tools to protect all of my loved ones, not just my family, but also my students, because they are considered for me as a teacher, my loved ones. Um, in the event of any type of disaster definitely gives me a better sense of peace of mind, if that's possible as a teacher. Um, but by also being allowing me to take proactive steps to be more prepared um, and allow me to feel more confident in my ability to be prepared for whatever type of weather, disasters, or a natural or any type of disasters that we face out here in this state. Um, as a teacher, I have the opportunity to not only educate both my students academically, um, but also instill important life skills, especially being a second grade teacher. That is one of the, the big things that we're trying to and, uh, bring to our, my students. And one of those life skills is learning how to be prepared and especially being prepared for emergencies. By participating in the Least This California campaign, I'm setting a positive example for all of my students and their families by teaching them the importance of being proactive, keyword proactive, um, and being resilient, which is also something we're constantly trying, trying to talk to our students about being resilient, have a, having a bubblegum brain, which means being able to constantly stretch and adapt and change through the faces of adversity, whether it's academic as well as social um, and weather emergencies. Um, by sharing what I've learned through the Least This California campaign with both my family, my friends, my colleagues, my students, I'm empowering others to take charge of their own preparedness efforts, as well as their own lives and safety. Um, and together we can create a culture of readiness that benefits everyone in our community. The Least This California campaign campaign offers practical tools and resources that are accessible and very easy to implement. Um, and, and I'm saying this because I've also started implementing a lot of those, not only in my personal family, but also within my classroom and my larger school community. Um, from creating emergency kits to developing family communication plans, these resources help me to empower and take more concrete steps towards preparedness in my everyday life, both as a mom and as a teacher. And again, as a mom and as a teacher, I know the importance of being flexible and adaptable in the face of uncertainty and adversity. And this campaign emphasizes the importance of both adaptability and 
being being prepared for emergency situ emergency situations, excuse me, empowering me to think creatively and problem solve effectively to keep all of my loved ones, my family, my friends, my students. campaign and to be able to share what I know about emergency preparedness and what it looks like for both my family as well as my students. Um, and on a side note, this is something for me that I've always kind of joked about here and there, being a, a huge lover of The Walking Dead um, and always talking about the zombie apocalypse and the what ifs and and just all, and watching shows um, on National Geographic. So the thought of emergency preparedness was always growing up and through my early adulthood, like a joking matter, like we have to have our bug out bags ready. Yeah, what if we, if there's a fire, we have to be prepared. So let's start thinking about it. But then when um I was approached by this campaign, it it brought a lot of those, those joking what ifs, although in the back of my mind, as a mom, I always had that, okay, this is what I can do with the what if, but being a part of this campaign definitely helped bring a lot of those what ifs. Um, into practical reality and gave me a lot of the tools and being able to start thinking and planning about what this is what I would do in the case, not in the case of a zombie apocalypse, but this is what I would do in the case of a power outage, which was something that actually happened to my home about a month ago. This is what would happen in the case of a fire or a flood. And so it definitely brought a lot of those joking what ifs and, and those joking, let's have this in our bug out bag to a more concrete um a meaningful experience that I've, I've definitely been able to share with everyone I know and definitely being in, involved in this. And it's an ongoing process because it isn't just a one-time thing, a one-time, okay, I have this, I have this, but it's constantly um, evolving and changing. Um, and this campaign definitely helps me in terms of thinking about the changing elements of what it means to be prepared. Um, and it's definitely lifelong learning and also improving what I have and what I can have. Um, and by doing this, it's helping me to stay engaged, not only with my friends and my family, but also my larger community um, through events, through speaking with neighbors, through having conversations with families. And it's always helping me and de deepening my knowledge and expanding my knowledge on the skills and things that I have to be better prepared. Um, because every, a lot of people rely on me, not just as a mom, but also as an educator, I'm definitely asked a variety of questions, um, not always related to academics, but also questions that are related to resiliency, to, to lifelong um, skills that many of my students, I'm hoping, will, um, if not um, begin to understand, definitely have some type of um, understanding or mastery once they leave my class. Um, and so in times of crisis, it's always easy to feel overwhelmed and helpless. Um, and especially for young people, and at, at times, even as women, we often feel very overwhelmed and helpless and or powerless to some extent, and when we're thinking about um, crises. And so through this campaign, in terms of at least thinking about disaster preparedness, definitely have safety, the safety of my family and my friends and my students. Um, and it definitely helps give me more a sense of peace of mind. Um, and being able to put concrete plans into place, which definitely helps with that feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. And ultimately, I'm hoping that by continuing to work with Listas, um, I'm able to build a sort of resiliency, um, not only for my, my family, but also for my students um, and my community by having us all learn how we can come together to be more prepared and be able to support one another um, through any type of disaster, whether it's weather, um, or any storm and definitely be able to emerge stronger um, and more resilient um, than we were before. And again, this is something that is definitely close to my heart as an educator because that is something that I talk about weekly with my students, being more resilient, learning how to learn from mistakes, learn from um, different events and coming out better, a better and stronger version of yourself. Um, so that's me and my involvement in a nutshell. Um, and like I said, I'm very thankful and, and, and grateful that I was able to be a part of this campaign. Um, thanks. Happy, thank you so much. I think we have a video though. I think your video is supposed to run here. Is that coming yes. back on the screen? Hey, earthquake just happened. Call me. Okay. Oh, nope, nope. Phone died. Now, what's my number? 
Having an emergency contact sheet is important in these types of situations. Think about who you want to contact. Make a list of their names and phone numbers. Pick a meeting spot outside of your neighborhood where you can all connect. Keep this list where everyone can find it. I, I, I would say that um, uh, I I think your kiddo stole the show, if, if, if I may say so. And it's yes. probably one of the cutest <laughs> videos we have in our campaign. Thank well, you. Yeah, it was it was very fun. Um, but also it was very fun having her being involved in um, but also again as a parent, it 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 was when going through that, I'm like, oh wait, because we're so used to with cell phones, you don't have to memorize numbers um like we did back when some of us older folks had to remember numbers, especially numbers where it was GR8. So, but now they're like, oh, what's my number? Just pull it up in the phone. But what happens if the phone dies? What happens if you're in an emergency and your 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 phone is about to die? Then all every number that you have, it's like, where is it? It doesn't exist anymore. Um, and so this was really important for me just walking through this with her because immediately afterwards we sat down and said, okay, who are the, the numbers that, that we need to have written down? Not just a family here, but especially being um, transplants, you, we have family back East that may want to know that we're okay. We don't have, no one memorizes their numbers anymore. So it was, it was definitely important having that, but then also having it in multiple parts of the house, because especially being in a two story, what if we can't get back upstairs where everything is saved? You want to have a place downstairs where little ones can access. And what if it's, oh, it's too high. I have people who are short in my home. So having it in a place where it's easy to, easily accessible, um, they know where it is, they know where they can go um, and be able to call those folks. Um, so this definitely while it was fun, it was also very necessary and definitely had me start thinking in terms of a mom, okay, what if I have to rely on them, even though they're used to relying on me? Now, I need them to step up. Did I provide the tools for my own children that I provide for my students every day to be able to make um, good decisions to be able to help the family? So, and yeah, she, she always steals the show everywhere we go. <laughs> Well, I, I can only say that I can relate. So <laughs> I, I can relate to having that phone, even whenever it's not an emergency and then you don't have your battery charged. And my husband tells me over and over again. So <laughs> I can relate. So thank you for that. And and wonderful, wonderful job on the video. Have a couple questions in the chat for you. I think you probably spurred some questions because probably everybody can relate to this. But how, um, how have teachers in your school responded to what you're doing? And... Um, and would teachers be a key group for listas? Um, I, I have I've had positive feedback so far from teachers that I've spoken with about this, and I definitely think they would be a key group because just like we have to think about and prepare for disasters at home, we do the same thing here in in, in school, whether it's through a fire, whether it's through um a shelter in place. We're constantly having to think about not only protecting our families but also protecting our school families. And so I definitely think it would be um great to to reach out to teachers and and talk with schools as well about their emergency plans and how we can help schools be uh, better prepared. I would say with the school that I am at currently, that is something that they definitely take very seriously. So we have a variety of emergency plans for a variety of situations. Um, but it's one thing having a plan. It's also um, just as important as, as act, uh, practicing that plan and putting it into place because when you're in an emergency, your brain is not thinking the same logical way that, and I see you're shaking your head because you can agree, you're not thinking the same <laughs> logical way you would during the week after you had your Taco Tuesday taco. You know, it's like, what what is going on? So having that plan, but then also being able to test it and work through. Oh, wait, I guess you froze. It's going to come back. Wonderful broadband, okay. broadband. There we go. <laughs> yeah, schools, what can I say? Um, but just, yeah, we're constantly having to think about and, and plan for the what ifs, but then also taking that into account when you have different things that are happening because at a school, there's constant pieces moving. Um, so I definitely think this would be something that would be great to talk with schools and teachers and faculty as well. And let's see here. Um, how do you know when a disaster is about to happen? Is there an alert system? So I, I believe there's one for earthquakes, but is there an alert system? Do you guys know, or should we share any alert systems with anyone, uh, other 
type of natural disasters? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so uh, we always like to say at the state, all disasters are local. At least they start local, right? They start in your backyard, in your community, uh, whatnot. And so that's why the local emergency alerts from your county or your city are so important for you to sign up for. So uh, if you go to Listos California slash alerts or Listos California dot org slash alerts, you um, can just click there your location and sign up right away. And you would either get a text message, a phone call, um, or an email possibly. Uh, what I will say is that the earthquake in Taiwan um, and April being Earthquake Awareness Month is also extremely important for us to be able to receive alerts about earthquakes. And so oftentimes there will be, you know, local governments will send something out if there was any major damage um, from an earthquake um, through that same local alerting system. But we do have at the state is the first of its kind in the nation, California's uh, early earthquake warning system. And so if you go either to, you know, your Google Android or um, Apple iPhone, you can download from the app store um, an application called MyShake. And that will give you life second, life saving seconds of advance notice if an earthquake, uh, once earthquake is, is could be felt in your area. And so it won't predict the earthquake because we can't do that, but it will definitely give you um, at least anywhere from a couple of seconds to 20 seconds of advance notice um, once shaking starts, so that you can take protective action to drop cover and hold on as well. So. You can go to my shake uh, application, go to or just go to lisoscalifornia.org, and we have all that information for all of the different alerting systems, um, and not only in your backyard in your local uh, government, but also uh, through the state through the earthquake early warning program. Great, and um, this back to you, uh, Happy. Another question came in: Is how do you translate listas to your students? I'm sorry, this this great internet went out for a second. Uh, I said, um, how do you trans how do you translate listas to your students? So for me, uh, again, listas is learning is what are the tools that we need to be prepared? What are the tools that we need to help give us a better sense of uh, resiliency um, in the event of an urgent situation? And so for me, it it's a variety of things. It's one worth, uh, a lot of what I do, especially in the mornings is mental resilience, resiliency. So whether it's um, practicing different mindset um, activities, whether it's um, yoga or learning how to calm a mind when you are faced with adversity, um, how different ways we can self-regulate our emotions so that if there is an event, at least that's one thing that I know I can control. I know I do have some urgency over is my emotions. The second, again, is what I'm doing similar activities that I've done at home with my own students. So if there is an event where we have to shelter in place, we have uh, plans and activities that will allow us to make sure, for example, we can use the restroom if we're not able to, to, to use, to step out to use the restroom. We have activities that um, don't require um, power or energy. We have uh, things that we have in a classroom if students are hungry, if we do have to leave. Um, we have a plan in that we constantly are practicing and, and tinkering and thinking about of where places that we can escape to. Uh, um, if I, trying to get students to memorize their own family numbers because same thing at this age, surprisingly, they have cell phones, um, but not surprising at the same time. And while they can program it to do everything under the sun, they don't know their family cell phone numbers. So the same thing, getting them to be able to memorize key and important numbers, um, especially for little people, they often call their parents, mom, but in the event of emergency, I need to know your mom's full name. So getting them to to think about that. What what are my fam what is my family name? What is what is my address? Where do I live? In the event that I can't get a hold of my mom's or my dad's, this is another person. So those are different things um, that I, I try to do when I think about okay, how can I incorporate what I've learned through Lisa's 
um, not only at home, but at, and at school with my families as well. And then also with that, communicating that with their family. So letting them know weekly, okay, this is something that we've talked about. Here are some of the challenges, whether it's, okay, if I am scared or upset, here, here are some activities or, that I can do to try to walk my, myself as a child, but also as a family that I can help encourage and support my child through in order to help them. Like I said, it's through different mindfulness activities, helping to practice with them phone numbers of important people and, and what have you. Um, Another thing I always talk about, and this is something I get laughed at a lot, not only by my kids, but my friends, I always have a snack in my bag. That's that's either that's either the mom and me or the I know what it's like to be hungry and I'm running around and I don't want to be hungry. So I try to encourage that with a lot of my students as well. You should always have some type of snack and some type of beverage that um, that won't spoil in your bag because you never know. As, and as adults, when we're constantly running, I'll speak from experience having that granola bar when I feel like I'm about to pass, pass or not pass, but when I feel like I'm on E definitely has helped not only my stomach, but it also has helped my mental capacity to continue going. Um, so that is definitely something I always encourage my students as well. Um, just thinking about those little things and, and trying to incorporate it now as they're younger, um, because you never know when it will come in handy. And so happy this is um, a, uh, Antonio Ray Harvey had a question how often should groups and families practice for disasters? I mean, I don't know if that's something that I can necessarily say. I, I think it, it depends. In the beginning, uh, I'll just as a teacher, I'll think about it in terms of an educator um, as often as needed. So in the beginning, if it's something new and fresh, just like with my students, it's something we practice weekly. And then as it becomes more comfortable um, and you've had various conversations about the, the activity that you've practiced and you've factored in, factored in the what ifs, then maybe it doesn't need to be as frequently. But I will, I will definitely say it depends on um, how often it's practiced um, and the importance of whatever the activity is. I'm sure Diana may have something to say about that as well, but at least in terms of educator, I would say as often as needed until students um, and, and, and everyone else feels comfortable in that plan. And Deanna, I'm going to pass it back to you anyway, because I know you had so more slides so you can respond or do your slides and or all the above. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that. I think at the end of the day, we have to kind of think about this as as a little bit about stretching that muscle. I love that Happy said that, you know, uh, having your brain be like bubble gum and being able to expand and contract and and kind of, um, you know, understand all of that. And so I think that that's for us is why we have so many resources available, not only for the grownups in the family, but then also for the little ones too. And so, you know, maybe while, while you know, parents are cooking dinner, um, the kids can be, you know, at the table or the countertop doing a coloring book on, you know, just things that maybe they would put in their go bag or just understanding that um, the needs of every family is going to be unique. Um, some, some, you know, parents are going to have to have that stuffy or the, the toy within the backpack and others are going to, you know, others are going to think they're, uh, they're dog moms and they're going to have to think about, you know, their pet food. And so I think, you know, there's always different, different um, situations for every family and it's going to be unique. But as long as you have those conversations and start thinking about that now, you're ahead of the game. Um, I'll just kind of mention briefly, I think you guys have heard from, from the stars, from uh, the assembly member and from happy as well. But I'll also say too, you know, this is where you guys all come into play as um, media outlets, resources, trusted messengers within the community. And we have so many resources available to you all, um, not only for this campaign that's specific to Lisa, and it looks beautiful and it's empowering and, you know, you just have a bunch of badass women um, uh, featured on it, but also um, we want to ensure that you have resources for any kind of emergency or disaster, or if you just want to provide people general tips. So go to listoscalifornia.org slash resources, and there they will be um, in many different languages for you to be able to share with your audience, with your readers um, in, in those languages and with images that, that resonate with them. Let's go to the next slide. I talked a little bit that we have a central hub 
um, not only talking about this important initiative, but then also talking about the resources um, and the progress and have all the videos there where you can watch Happy and all the rest of the folks, um, the women that were a part of and have been a part of our effort. If there's anyone in the community that you're seeing that would be helpful to do this as well, we actually have a few uh, tips and trick sheets for them to record their own videos. So we encourage you to do that as well. And we're happy to help on the back end. Let's go to the next slide. I mentioned that, um, you know, through Listos California, through Cal OES, for us, it's more important uh, than ever before to be culturally competent um, relevant within the communities. And so we have so many different kinds of resources in um, the thre California's threshold languages. And so um, I think, you know, the assembly member said it really well earlier that, you know, if um, Californians can get trusted um, key messages through trusted sources with people that walk, talk, and act just like them, they will be more likely to um, to take and retain the information and actually do something with it. And so that's what we want people to do is to do something with it and actually uh, take the steps they need to inform their families and their communities about emergency preparedness. And so we have that in all the different languages, um, it, not only informational, um, specific to different disasters, but also generalized as well, videos, coloring sheets, all of the things lisoscalifornia.org slash resources. That might be my last slide. Um, and as always, uh, you know, you uh, all rely so much on ethnic media services and California Black media. But if you do have any specific questions um, uh, for us on the campaign, don't hesitate to reach out to our email media at caloes.ca.gov. And we're happy to coordinate with you if there's one-on-one -on -one interviews and then also uh, maybe connect you with some of our spokespeople and, and VIPs and whatnot. So I'll throw my email there and, and also in the chat and um, hand it back over to uh, Regina and Sandy. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for um, being here. I know that we probably are sparing people three minutes. I always love to give people back at least three minutes to their day. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Sandy, I think we'll be following up with an email uh, from EMS with the recording, with bios, and I believe pictures, headshots um, of the speakers for today. Um, but with that said, I want to thank you all. Thank the speakers, the interpreters, and the media for joining us today.